Are the Kansas City Chiefs planning on re-signing defensive end Mike Goldana? Recent reports suggest that that is exactly what Brett Feach wants to do. We're going to give you all of that and the latest right here on the Chiefs Report by Chad Sports. I'm your host, Chase Andrews. But before we get into that topic, we do have an update on the Rasheed Rice, Rasheed Rice situation involving his car that was in an accident in Dallas, Texas. Now, again, not speculating. It's not confirmed whether he was the driver or not, but his lawyers and him released a statement just a little bit ago saying, statement from the lawyer Roy Royce West on Rasheed Rice. On behalf of Rasheed Rice, his thoughts, on, his thoughts are with everyone impacted by the automobile accident on Saturday. Rasheed is cooperating with local authorities and will take all necessary steps to address this situation responsibly. Obviously, again, nothing confirming nor denying anything, but if you want the full rundown on what exactly is happening with Rasheed Rice and kind of what is going on in that situation, had a video earlier this morning, latest Chiefs news. Uh, you can go find it on our, on our channel right now. So uh, just click on the channel icon. You can go find it. We'll have the latest details and pretty much everything you need to know about this situation in there because, honestly, the statement didn't really provide too much clarity on what's going on. So... Uh, everything that we knew back then is still valid, so you can go check it out on the channel. All right, let's get into Mike Dana, because I think that's a very important topic to talk about on today's show, because as I mentioned, recent reports suggest the Chiefs are actively trying to re-sign the defensive end, and hopefully that gets done within the next week or so. Now, if you want the Chiefs to re-sign Mike Dana, well then, easy way to let me know, like the video. And I'm telling you, go hit that like button, because I certainly love Mike Dana. I know a lot of the fans like him too, so... If you're one of the guys who really, really wants him back on this team, especially with Charles O'Minahue being injured, well, then go down there and hit that like button. I know that we would all appreciate it here at Chiefs Kingdom. Bob Fresco was the one who kind of had this original report, or rather the, the, the secondary report saying, source, Chiefs are working to bring back Mike Dana. I hope this happens. Really like him. One of my favorite players, hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Now, there were earlier reports that we got that the Chiefs wanted him back in mid-March. So basically, right as free agency began, the Kansas City Chiefs were actively trying to re-sign him, especially since a Charles Domenehue injury causes a little bit of depth problems on the edge. Now, we got this from A to Z Sports, who had the full kind of report on it, and I like the way they kind of go up, because they say, a source confirms to A to Z Sports that the Chiefs are attempting to re-sign defensive end Mike Dana, who remains a free agent after first becoming one in mid-March, at the start of the new league year. I'm told that a deal could be agreed upon as early as the first week of April. 610 Sports' Bob Fresco first reported on March 29th that the team was working to bring back Dana. This move would make complete sense because I've mentioned it a couple times already, but with Omenahue injured, this defensive edge is a little bit parched, I think is maybe the right word to say. Felix Duque Uzoma is great. I think Malik Herring could also do some great things, and I love Carl Loftus. But besides that, I just don't know if there's a true starter on the edge besides Carl Loftus, and you need two. Well, guess what? Mike Dana was in this exact situation last year because a many who had that suspension where he missed the first six games of the year. This is similar to that, and I'm kind of in a way, almost the exact same. I mean, not to the exact extent of being suspension, but Omenihu will be out for a um, Good majority of the first half of the season, if not even more, maybe potentially all the way to playoffs with that ACL injury he suffered in the AFC Championship game. Well, Mike Dana, in the time that he played on the field as a starter, it was pretty dang good. 50 tackles, 7 tackles for loss, 6.5 sacks, and 3 pass breakups. But Dana, he's one of those guys that people don't really see the value in him as much as you saw it this year and when he actually had to come out and play for the Chiefs. Now, obviously, he had 25, 26, 27 tackles throughout 2020, 2021, and 2022, but then he had career size, career highs and tackles and sacks uh, and tackles for a loss all this year, and it was because, guess what? The Chiefs needed him, and he stepped up. I want to have that again. I mean, he wasn't just serviceable last year. That's not the thing that I'm saying with. He was good. In fact, in the playoffs, he was put in at critical situations, especially when guess what? Omenihu got hurt. I mean, this defensive line was absolutely trounced in the Super Bowl. You had Derek Nottie, who was a starter that was injured. You had Omenihu that was injured out. And so guess what? Mike Dana stepped up and played a great game and really helped that defensive line get some pressure on Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers. Well, guess what? That was new to some people watching the Super Bowl, but to Chiefs fans, 
We saw that at the beginning half of the season and tenfold. I mean, this guy is a game guy. He can go out there and play whenever you need him to, and that's exactly why I would like to see him back with the Chiefs. And honestly, I didn't expect this to happen, but due to some recent cap space uh, opening up, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, where is a potential for that money to be there for Michael Dana? The question I ask you, though, is do you want the Chiefs to re-sign Dana? Because I know some people may not want it. Well, now's your time to let me know and get your opinion in the comment section. Type S for sign. If you want him back, type P for pass if you do not want Michael Dana back. All right, let's go to defensive line coach Joe Cullen because he had a quote about Mike Dana that I really, really liked. He says, I say this always. This is my second year with Mike. Mike did a great job since the day he's got here, but Mike's one of those guys that I've had some guys over the years that everything they do, he's doing it right. Coach Spaggs has a certain defense or a technique that he wants the ends to do. Mike's doing it right and doing it as hard as he can do it and doing it that way all the time. And I always tell the D-line, I don't want a box of chocolates. I don't want to know what you know, what you're getting in Mike Dana. And he's not just a guy. He's a heck of a football player. He's tough. He's physical. We move him inside. He plays all four positions across the front. And Mike Dana's going that way. I don't know about you, but that sounds like somebody that I would want on my team. He's versatile. He will practice as hard as humanly possible. He puts in 110% of his effort whenever it's happening, whether it's games, whether it's practice, whether it's just a scrimmage. It doesn't matter. He's putting in every single one of his efforts. So i got to be honest, this is somebody that I would exactly want on my team. It's something that I would, I would want on my roster. Now, something I want in my closet is a Chiefs Super Bowl championship hat. Luckily, since we are back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions, you can have it. And if you go to chatsports.com slash SB hat, you're going to get this Super Bowl championship hat, 45% off. Uh, deal's still going on. It's going to be just for a little bit longer, so make sure you go check it out. 45% off. They got the Super Bowl gear, and this one I think is my favorite one, 45% off. But I've got mine at home already, and I'm telling you right now, it is my favorite hat. And I kid you when I say I wear, I, I kid you not, I wear hats a lot outside of the office, and I'm telling you, I'm always wearing this one. So make sure you get it. It's comfortable. It's really, really stylish. And plus, who wants to show off that we're back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions? So that's what I would think. We'll go, you can go get it down there, chatsports.com slash hat. We'll have the link in the comments and the description of this video. Okay, I mentioned the cap space. What would a contract cost for Michael Dana? Well, there was some cap space movement, obviously, with Legereus Need being officially now traded to the Tennessee Titans. Let's talk money. The Chiefs currently sit with around $27.4 million in cap space after the trade of Legereus Need that freed up over $19 million. The 2024 draft class will cost around $8 million-ish, and that's just a rough estimate leaving the team with around $17 million to spend here in 2024 for each year, or at least what's left of it, uh, including potential restructurements and stuff like that. This is more than enough for Dana's contract, I think is the first thing that I'll say here, because I want to take a step back and think, okay, Mike Dana performed well last year, but I don't know if he was necessarily a starter. How do we compare him to another guy in the league? Well, in my mind, I think we compare him to somebody who last year was – Somebody who reinvigorated his career, Jadavion Clowney, which is similar to Mike Dana, I think reinvigorated Dana's career. Guess what? He got a two-year, $20 million deal with the Panthers with a max value of $24 million. Now, do I think he's as good as Jadavion Clowney? No. Do I think it's a similar type deal? Yes. And so what I've kind of constructed is this. Two years, $19 million is what a projected contract that I have seen and agree with here on the Chiefs board as $12.5 million will be guaranteed. I think this is a good fit because, again, you're thinking about this defensive line. Felix Induke Uzoma is a, technically still, in my mind, a rookie. He didn't play much last year. I don't want to put him out there as our first-day starter. I, I think Molly Carrying is good, but I, I just really feel like this defensive line could use a boost on the edge. And Dana knows the defense. He's already loved by the defensive line coach, Joe Cullen. And on top of which, he was great last year in this exact same situation. So. That's just my opinion. $9.5 million per year. Is he worth it, though? Well, that's where I bring you in once again. 
do you think that Michael Dana is worth that amount of money? I'm just kind of remind you, Derek Nottie, defensive tackle, who I would think has somewhat of a similar mindset as Dana, he got around $2 million. So uh, is he worth $9.5 million a year, given he had career highs in tackles for a loss, sacks, and tackles last year, and obviously being on the edge, you're a little more versatile. Type Y for yes if you think he is worth it. Type N for no if you think, ha no way I'm paying him $9.5 million. That makes no sense. Well, let me know down in the comment section down below. This got me thinking, what are some other defensive edge guys that I could see the Chiefs going after? Well, here's my top five of left free agents that could be signed on the defensive edge. Emmanuel Ogba, who uh, we've talked about, he could potentially be a good fit, obviously, having experience with the Chiefs. Carl Lawson at number two. Yannick Ngakwe, who has really a great career, uh, a great career behind him, and I think he could still be serviceable. Fletcher Cox is more of a bigger guy on the edge. I think he doesn't really fit the style of the Chiefs and, and the way they like to use their edge rushers. And then Calias Campbell, uh, I think he could be potentially a good option as well. But I think I say all these names and still feel as though Dana fits better than anybody else on there. And why I say that? Well, first of all, he's still relatively young compared to those guys. And on top of which, I say it again, he knows the defense that he's getting into. He knows Joe Cullen. He knows Coach Spax. He knows the way he's going to be used, and he did it effectively and efficiently last year, and in a way that I think people were undervaluing him all year long. Well, guess what? Now it's time for Brett Fisher to say, hey, I like Felix Sr. Duque Azoma. Do I think he's there just yet? I don't know. Get back Mike Dana, even if it's just a one-year deal. I feel like it's very important to go and get that edge rusher that can really help out and be a kind of waiting board for Charles Domenehue before he comes back. Make sure you're hitting the like button because, man, I love the Chiefs, and hopefully you do too. And if you do, well, then go down there. Hit that like button. I'd certainly appreciate it because likes help us get more viewers, more viewers, more videos, more videos, more fun all around. We really appreciate y'all watching. For now, Chiefs can know. Peace out.